Kevin from LAMTECH. This is a part two of the video tutorial for volunteers. So in this part two, I'm going to actually log into the site. And once I'm logged into the site, I'm going to show you what it looks like in the back if you are working, especially if you are creating data or if you are updating election data in the back end. So work with me it may be a little faster but let's see how best we can get to it so the best way to do this is when you want to log in is you need to go to slash user on the site and always make sure that you are on the https site that's a secure site so once you put in slash user the login form is going to show up you can put in your username and password to log in if you don't remember your password you want to click on reset your password Put in your username or email and an email will be sent to you with the password reset link if you don't remember to go to slash user simply click on get involved and look on the left you will see a login link click on that login link you get to the same form put in your username and password and you log in once you log in the site is going to redirect you automatically to your user page from this user page you can click on edit and while you are editing this user page, you can change your password to whatever else you want. So I'm going to go back so I can get back to that user page. And if you look on your site, you will notice that there is a black bar at the top and it has some menu. That menu is context sensitive and it is based on permissions and rules. So I am logged in as a user that have access to create content and update content of some specific type. So for example, I can see all the content that have been created here right now, and I can click on any one of these content to see if I'm able to edit the content. If I'm able to edit this content, I will see the link new draft. If I click on new draft, I'll be able to open this content to make updates to it. If I don't see new draft, it simply means I don't have access to edit this content. So now I click on new draft and as I click on new draft, I'm looking at the form right now. You'll see that under moderation state, it says draft only. That's because the user account that I'm logged in with only have permissions to create content and put the content in draft. Some other user have to look at the content and approve it before it can be published for the public to see. Once I click on the content tab from the top, this will display all of the content in the site. Right now, I was just on the files uh, tab. Now I'm clicking on media. I'm on the media tab. On this media tab, you see all the images that have been uploaded, all the PDF documents that have been uploaded, and you can filter by type. And uh, right now I just filtered by document. Documents are usually PDF files, uh, Excel files, or Word files. Videos are usually videos that are hosted on YouTube. And images are just usually images. So you can edit any one of these. If you have access to, you will see edit. If you don't see edit, it means you don't have access to edit that specific piece of content. So always click back on content and it will always take you back to this content screen. And if you click on media and click add media, you will see all the different types of media that you have access to, to update or to add new on. If you don't see add, it simply means you don't have permissions. So one of the things you are going to be working on is provinces or the district de delimitations. So if you click on provinces or the regions, you will see all the regions and click on edit on one of them and you can just edit that. So for example, I want to add an image for this province. If I have an image that already exists, I'll click the option to say, I want to select an existing image and I can type the name of that existing image, select it and then click add and that image will be added. If I don't have image that exists, I want to actually upload a new image. I need to select the other option that says add new media. And with the add new media, I can then upload a new image and attach that image to this. What if I want to use the map, which is one of the things that you are going to be doing most of the time to update the map. To update the map, simply start typing the name of some place in Sierra Leone that you want to put your pin on and it will find it. If it doesn't find it, another easy way is if you are standing at the location at the time and you are doing this on your phone or on your computer, just click on the option that says find me and the system will automatically find you and geolocate you. Otherwise, just type Sierra Leone. It will put the point right in the middle of Sierra Leone and then you can move your way 
true right now i just put port loco and sierra leone and i can see my map is now pointing on port loco and if you know this area you can actually move things around and put the pointer on the specific area where you think you want to put it and where it's supposed to be and once you find the pin on that area it's going to collect the longitude and latitude at the back and you are basically done with that we have the population information this information we are getting this from the census data 2015 census data so once you have that information you can add that information in the different fields and once you're done you hit save that information is done and it's saved and it's live you go to district it's the same thing once you click on district you will see edit to the right and click on edit especially if you see things that are blank and then edit this information and add the relevant information using the data source that we will provide you so again we providing you uh, the census data that's what we have been using to populate most of these fields if you go to constituencies we have a lot of constituencies i believe 130 something we have to edit each one of these also and put a map in the center point of each one of these constituencies and for constituencies they belong to districts so we have to make sure that we select the district that the constituency belong to so that we can uh, make the data more meaningful now i'm going to NEC website just to show you where some of the data that we are using is coming from once I find the NEC website, I will download one of the constituency information. What's happening here? Okay, I think I'm getting it wrong. Okay, here you go, that's the correct website. So right from here, you can see when I click on constituency information, I can see all the constituency information that NEC provides. And I can scroll from here and then pick this information up and make sure I update my constituency. You can see this is where we got the population for each constituency according to NEC because the census data doesn't have, doesn't include this information. So we pick that description and we put the description in and put the population in for each constituency like that. If I want to search for a specific constituency, I will just put the constituency ID on the name and I can find it. And once I find it, I can then edit that constituency and add the relevant information to the constituency like I'm doing right now. Each constituency also will have an image and we just want to attach images to each one of the constituencies. So somebody that knows the constituency, as soon as they see that image, they say, okay, this looks like some place within this constituency. We will. So that's this is more or less guesswork. You have to know Sierra Leone a little bit and you have to know where the constituency is in what district or what towns and what wards it covers so you can find the image for that. So now I'm looking for, I believe the census data. This is the census data that I was talking about. And from this census data, we can then collect information. I'm looking for this Kailahu. Uh, I'm on constituency one and constituency one is part of Kailahu district. So I want to go back and I want to see if I can find any information for the constituency. Well, as you can see, there is no constituency information in the census uh, data, but there is information about the district. So if I search Kailahu, I will find the first hint for Kailahu. That's the population for Kailahu. I just want to cross check this to make sure that it's correct. So I'm going to copy this information and I'm going to go cross check this with what we have in the platform already for, for the population for Kailahu. So I'll go back to districts and look for Kailahu. Go to districts and then find Kailahu. Click edit on Kailahu. Or even if I don't click edit, the information is right there. So I can search for that information. I'm just going to copy the population information here and I'm going to paste it in there. I did not find anything. There is a comma right there. So I have to put that comma in and see if I can find it. If I don't find this information, it means our information is wrong. So I put a comma right there. So it's exactly the same. Whatever is in the census data, that's what we have. So these are some of the exercises you are going to be doing, looking at the census data and making sure that you put the correct information in the correct fields in the platform.
and uh, go back to constituencies and go back to district and then click edit on that well this is not districts anymore I believe this is uh, this is a data source uh, field so anywhere we find the information that we are using we want to make sure that we copy the URL of that source and give them full credit so this is chief doms actual actually so i was just looking at the chiefdom information and we are getting the chiefdom information from one specific file and that file is what i just pulled so i can get the information from the chiefdom and i want to make sure that that file is referenced here so if anybody wants to check if our information is correct they will find the place where we found this information from so if you are wondering where we got the description for each one of the chief downs, we got the descriptions from that document that I just showed you. And you will have that as well. And the words, for the most part, we got the information from NEC. So we just collected all that information from NEC and populated it here. And we have to make sure we select again the constituency in which the word is. For some of these, we don't know. So we're going to have to figure it out and put the correct information in for each one of these. Other than that, the information will not be as accurate as we want it to be. Okay, and sections are another one. Then you have political parties, so you can edit this as well. So this is a list of all the political parties according to NEC and we can edit each one of these political parties. As you can see there is one called independent. This is for people who don't have a political party really. And there are a few of them, especially for the parliamentary elections and I believe for lo local council elections as well. So we can edit that information and, uh, and put them as independent. Now I'm going back to the home page. And right from the home page, if you want to learn more about the platform, you can click on help from that menu and you can learn more. If you go to structure, you will see that you don't have any permissions to access anything on that structure. If you are more technical and you want to learn about the APIs, API stands for application programming interface that we are using to uh, work with the platform you can click on this API links and you'll find all the detailed information that you need so basically with this APIs we've provided an interface that will allow anyone to use this API in their own software to interact with the platform that interaction could be creating election data it could be just pulling election data from the platform and displaying it somewhere else in some other system so it's basically a door or a gateway to get into the platform to bring information into the platform and to pull information out of the platform in a programmatic way it's not a human way well the human have to write the software to do it but you basically software is going into the background and it's pulling that information sending it somewhere else or you have the information somewhere else and you are pushing it into this into this platform automatically so this is very technical unless you are interested in apis or creating your own mobile app or your own web app that's going to depend on the information that we have in this platform this may not be your area but it's very important to know about this because it's one of the advantages that this platform have over the website that NEC have or over the website that new or any of the other election bodies in Sierra Leone will have. None of them have the capabilities to uh, expose APIs that will allow people to push information in and pull information out of it and in order for you to push this information in or pull information out we need to know who you are we need to know the purpose of uh, what will you be doing what type of information you'll be putting in and what type of information you'll be pu pulling out and there are rules around this but all these rules are set in stone and they are programmatically set they, you're just not going to be able to do the wrong thing basically because there are checks and balances to do that and there are various different types of uh, technical documentation on these APIs and you can download the technical information as well if you want but this is 
basically uh, one of the important areas at some point in the life of this platform we're going to create a mobile app and that mobile app is going to pull information from this platform using those apis and the mobile app is also going to push information into the platform using the same apis and now i'm just clicking through the links to see some other pages i just clicked on the get involved now i clicked on the view a uh, news page and you can see there are news items and if you look at any item you can actually compare the different versions of this particular item so this is a news item that was uh, created and you can check this news item to see how much it has it has changed so i'm going to check for example this page to see who has edited this page and how much it has changed and i will click the first version and the last version and by clicking that version i'm now doing a comparison looking taking the difference between what it used to look and what it, it looks now so anytime you go in and you make changes those changes are tracked and we can go back and forth between those changes at any time as we see fit so there is no easy way to 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 mess things up here completely because there are checks and balances this is just another view of those checks and balances showing what information was there previously and what is there now if you see a plus it means something was added a minus means something was removed green means something was added and a red or that maroon color also means something was removed and there are different ways that you can view this and if you buy a programmer and you use any version control software you'll be very familiar with looking at these colors green and or red or plus and minus to see the difference between your code basically and I think that ends this part of the tutorial. Thank you. Bye.